Secretary of State, the, the UK Secretary of State for Northern Ireland, revoked Marion's pardon. So the lawyer went back to prison again and said, it is actually not within the gift of the Secretary of State to revoke a royal pardon. A royal pardon is in the gift of Her Majesty the Queen, who notwithstanding the fact that she's received her stolen goods, is this <laughs> her royal pardons. And so unless Her Majesty the Queen revokes the pardon, the pardon stands. So an art, a, a legal argument uh, has started and is still going on. The Secretary of State said it wasn't a pardon, that Marion was released on license of good behaviour. Now he was wrong in that. And he's not the smartest of men. <laughs> he's a Tory and uh, well, well got, as we say in our American. He's well got financially and politically. And in the piece, I suppose, Secretary of State of Northern Ireland seen the Cushy and not more. So apart from trying to reduce corporation tax to 10% uh, and putting people in jail for no good reason, he does not have a lot to do. So Owen Patterson, our Secretary of State for Northern Ireland, actually I personally think being a sloppy sort of a guy made a mistake. Most of the prisoners in Northern Ireland are released on license of good behaviour as part of the Friday agreement. Then we got to these wires crossed at the beginning and he said, aha, another one for us. And then we put Murray in jail and the lawyer came back and went, oh, shit. <laughs> She's got a royal pardon. She's not one of those other people. So what happened? Royal pardon is my son. This, this parade, disappear, diddly squat, gone, into thin air. When did it disappear? When Marion Price was arrested. So when, when the lawyer went to the parole commission and demanded the Secretary of State produce the pardon, he came and said, it's lost. We don't know what happened. <coughs> when pushed, he owned up that in the history of the state, as far as I can go back, I mean as far as Walter Raleigh and the first years of that, I have no idea. But nobody in the history of the state, in a position of authority, has any recollection of a royal pardon document ever been lost before. In the whole history of this state, there's only one copy of the royal pardon missing. And it's Marion Price. So we're asked to believe that that's unfortunate. The real problem comes to when the parole commission, to the people who sit to look and, and determine whether people are allowed in or out of prison, parole commission met. And the lawyer put it up to them that in fact, there was, there was a habeas corpus issue. This young woman had an entitlement, because she's 58 now, that's young of your age of me. Uh, she had an entitlement. She had granted bail by the court. And the, the rule of law should be upheld. And the Secretary of State had simply said that he had an entitlement to override that, and he had to demonstrate his authority. But the parole commissioner said they have no authority. They can't override the Secretary of State. Why not? Because he has secret information. <laughs> he has secret information that Marion Price might be, I don't be used to English language. He has secret information, secret intelligence, they call it. Call it. Uh, I, I'm not a good person at trying. <laughs> Every time I get Owen Patterson and intelligence secret Owen Patterson has secret intelligence, which is not his own. He got it from somebody else, not my own. Except that they're in MI5. Not MI6, because that requires 
the UN doctor is, is going in this week. Marion's case has been raised by uh, major human rights organisations. It's been raised by Amnesty, it's been raised by British Human Rights Watch, and by the Committee for the Administration of Justice, which is a group, uh, an NGO in Northern Ireland that has for many years uh, highlighted the abuses uh, and, and has stand in uh, at the UN. So Marion's case within the Human Rights Confraternity is raising significant concerns about what is happening in Northern Ireland. It's the most critical case, but in the middle of this piece, it is not the only case. Marion is not the only person being held in Northern Ireland under administration, administrative detention. There are three other people, and while the numbers have currently been kept small, it is increasing the number of people who are being held that way and the efforts we have to put in to get them out. So we see that this is in fact a rolling back of things we were promised in the Good Friday Agreement. The core bits of a new society that we were promised was one civic forum to allow those of us who don't define ourselves as Catholics, Protestants, Unionists or Nationalists, those who, def to, who define themselves as socialists or feminists or human rights activists or trade unionists, through the civic forum, we would have some participative input in the government. It never happened. Civic forum was still for. We were promised an equality commission, which we have got, but it does nothing but mark the government's homework. No campaign for anti-discrimination, anti-sectarianism, anti-racism. And the most fundamental of all, we were promised a human rights bill in Northern Ireland as part of an independent Westminster Act that would ensure that we would never have human rights violations again, that we could not address without an eight year battle to go to the European Court. And that has never happened, and we are told will never happen. So once that's going on, we are beginning to see the prevent policy, we're beginning to see the same old routine built again, where people who, because they disagree, the crime in Northern Ireland today is the crime of dissidence. It was easier. It was easier in the midst of armed struggle and it was easier in 68, 69 and 70 to have a dissident opinion. Now I mean a dissident Republican opinion, a dissident trade union opinion, a dissident political opinion, a dissident position on sexual orientation. It was easier to do those things in Northern Ireland during the war and before the war than it is to do them now. Because the big crime in Northern Ireland society at the minute is to be different. To speak out against the consensus. To speak out against corruption. To speak out against poverty. To speak out against anything. And you are accused of alien and better a road back to violence. If I say, look, I in my Years of work, and I couldn't work. From I was elected. My crime was being elected. <laughs> Once I left that place in 1973, I was blacklisted in Northern Ireland and never was able to earn one penny of an income until 1998. Nobody was brave enough to allow me to wash their floors. And there's a whole there's a whole generation of us who could never work. Now the devil made work for idle hands. <laughs> <laughs> I work for my living and I don't have to work for it. 
as long as I am fit. Because like everybody else, it's the only way I have money. I have to earn it. Unlike the bankers. <laughs> but I can now go to my basic work. But I see in the work that I do, I see poverty, I see homelessness, I see racism, I see sectarianism that is as deep but not deeper than it was when I was 21 years of age. And for saying that out loud, people are afraid to speak in case they lose that piece of wages they used to have. And people will say to me, Bernard, shut up. So many of the people who are part of a movement for justice are now dependent as community workers, uh, as administration workers, as anything, dependent on the peace for the basic income they have that they are frightened to open their mouths because they're taken away from them again. So many people are frightened to express a dissident opinion in case they are accused of aiding and abetting terrorism. That that has creeping repression has got to the point that a woman who's healthy but not her spirit was broken by the state is now back in prison. And you say, why pick on Marianne Price? For a number of reasons. Because she can be picked on. Because it's symbolic. Because as a stubborn woman, she gives them on for their money and it will allow them to drive their point home. And because it will make the point that they are in charge of them and they can do it again. And we have got, we have, there are two ways to go here. We have been down one of those roads and I can tell you it leads to no work but to that picture on the lawn of the White House. There is no militaristic route to salvation for the people in Ireland, for the people in Palestine, for the Muslim people, for Afghanistan. Here's the reality. It's not even a moral question. And I'm bad because I'm going to say those dogs of war who run the world could wipe us all out like that. We are you know, apart from the morality of it, none of us, all of us together, no military match for what they are holding at our heads. But in solidarity, if we make the links, if we say, well, I tell you, however you divided us up, we are human beings. And we are, as working class people, we are the human beings who put this world together, who hold it together, and who keep it together. And you have two choices. You take us all on as human beings standing our ground together for our humanity and our class, for democracy, for peace, for human rights. You press the button and come with us. Because either this world will be made fit for human beings to live in, or we have no future. And that starts not with some big plan to take over the world. It starts with us having the courage to say, you will not do it in Guantanamo Bay. You will not do it in Belmarsh. You will not do it in Belfast. Without us linking arms together, <coughs> exposing you and trying to stop you. And that has to start with small steps. It has to start with us making people aware that they're doing the same thing to all of us in isolated patches. And the main reason they're getting away with it is they're making me afraid of you and you afraid of her and her afraid of him. So I don't want it to happen to my people but in case anybody thinks I might be a bad person, I'm certainly not going to have anything to do with yours because they're telling me you're bad. And I'm not going to have anything to do with yours because they're telling me you're worse. We have to get over that.
And we have got to say, you touch one of us and you touch all of us. And we've got to start. <laughs>